What's up, dudes? My name is Nick. Welcome to my 30 favorite songs of 2017, my 30 favorite K-pop songs of 2017 video. I've already recorded this one time around. I know that it's going to be a very, very long video because 30 songs is way too much. Uh, so definitely prepare yourself get ready get a drink and a snack or something like that and you know just 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 prepare yourself for a nice long video um i didn't intend this to be 30 songs i absolutely did not think or did not want this to be 30 songs i'd intended on this being a like being 10 songs and being a maximum length of like 20 minutes potentially because i cannot talk about 10 songs of my favorite songs this year in 10 minutes so i wanted this to be 10 songs 20 minutes at max but 10 songs is not enough to kind of capture the 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 scope and the diversity of songs that i absolutely loved listening to um you know this this year so we're gonna go through them one through thirty. They're not in any sort of particular, or they're not really in any order. There's no ranking, which is like one song is my most favorite, and any of these is my least favorite. I all like them, I suppose, relatively equally, but they're all for somewhat different reasons. And um, let's just let's just get it started. To be completely on, honest with you guys, the order of this of this list is basically in order of release this year. So this was the first song that was released this year. The most the the song that was released earliest in the year on this list. So Ravi and his solo song Bomb is, of course, a super killer song. I love it. Everyone, I'm sure there's a lot, lots of people love this, but you know, I'm loving the fact that he's got an opportunity to kind of unleash his stuff that he's been doing on his, you know, mixtape releases out into an official release. And then, of course, you know, just the 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 nature, the the crazy. In huge, be what's the word to describe it? The best, best way word to describe it is bombastic. It's, it's super crazy. It's big. It's flamboyant. There's a lot of attitude in it. It's really, really awesome. And I, I just love the song. It's a really, really, really awesome song to listen to. The song I think I love you from Sonamu is my second song, obviously. And this is the song from Sonamu that kind of revitalized my interest in the group. And the reason for that is, and the reason why I like this song in general is just because it's a ton of fun it's just absolutely pure fun to listen to this song and you know there's a couple Sun Sunmoo's kind of released a couple of songs like that recently that have kind of revitalized my interest in in the group previously the releases have kind of been kind of you know lackluster in terms of what I've enjoyed out of them and I've been kind of losing interest in Sonamu but this specific song right here got my interest you know kind of rekindled my interest and you know I'm definitely looking forward to whatever it is that they release coming up in 2018 or coming up in this year the first song that you potentially would not have I guess expected or you would not have thought of is the solo song from the Miss A member or the former Miss A member now that the group is officially finished uh Susie called yes no maybe um i'm diff I, I dig on the the slightly dark you know vibe to this song which isn't really something that is you know a, a dark vibe to a solo song not necessarily something that you see too frequently especially when you're going when it's coming from a female vocalist as well vocalists don't normally go with dark you know themes like they did like she did in this song and it's really, really awesome. Not to mention, dude, the, the chorus on this song is just absolutely addicting. I can't get over it. It's really, really great. And, of course, it just makes the rest of the song addicting as well. Coming in at my fourth song of the year, my fourth favorite on this list at the very least, is the song from CLC titled Hobgoblin. They've had a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde year with Hobgoblin being their most recent, or their, their release to start the year off for them, and then... I'm drawing a blank on what their second one was, but that one was completely different. Now, Hobgoblin 
kind of a song that was channeling the the, the, the the sound and the concept and the idea and the look and image and just about everything about it was just screaming for a minute from the last two years. And I'm okay with that. I'm personally okay with that. We've kind of been missing something, uh, you know, a, a girl group in K-pop that's been going to do something like four minute had brought to the table with their most with their two previous releases and also what they'd kind of done with their music earlier in their career and it's always good clc did all really really fantastic with it hobgoblin is a kick-ass song i'm just really disappointed that they didn't actually continue with it and they completely changed for their for their second release which is equally as good i think but in a completely different way but i kind of prefer this one a lot more it's only natural that my top 30 songs of the year would have to have at least one song from dreamcatcher and of course for me it's got to be the debut song for dreamcatcher called chase me you know, first off, I'm super happy to see the members of Minx back in action, even though, of course, they're not Minx and they're doing something that's completely different. Minx is a really good group. If you haven't listened to them, you should definitely check them out. But Dreamcatcher is killing it. I guess they decided, somebody over at Happy Face Entertainment decided, you know, that baby metal was a thing to copy, and that's kind of what Dreamcatcher has, you know, at least done in their first year. Who knows what's going to happen coming up in 2018, but I'm definitely very, very excited. Unfortunately for Dreamcatcher, and one of the things that I've, you know, which is pretty obvious if you watch my reaction videos, is their subsequent releases after that, I kind of start, I like them less and less. I still really, really like the music, I still really, really like the releases, but, you know, moving from, you know, Beyond Chase Me to, is it Nightmare, I think it was, after that, really good song. Not my favorite, not as much, I don't like it as much as Chase Me. And then their most recent release, I don't really like that as much as their second, you know, and just the way that it goes, but, you know, like I said, doesn't mean I don't still like it, I'm definitely still really, really excited for what they're going to do coming up in 2018. As we turn over a brand new page on my notebook, we're up to the song from Cross Gene titled Black and Black or White. I said Black and White, it's a title, Black and White isn't the title of my reaction video, but the actual title of this song is Black or White by the boy group Cross Gene. And I think if I remember back, if we go to, I think it's 2015, that cross gene with their song play with me made it onto my favorite songs of the year i believe that they did and they're really it, it's a really really great song black or white specifically is a really great song so is play with me you should left you should listen to both of them if you haven't um the thing that's really really good about this one the thing that i really enjoy about it is the fact that they 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 managed to bring two completely different sorts of concepts and tones and sounds to the music to the music and fit them into one and it actually works really, really well, and it sounds really, really good. Of course, it's the entire concept of the song, and this whole the whole comeback for them is the also which goes to the album as well, is to have two different concepts at the same time. And you know, they did a really, really good job with the song and the music video to promote that album. And then on the album itself, for the two different concepts that they've got in their promotion song, Black or White, they've also got one song that fit that kind of matches with each of those concepts so you've got two songs on the album that reflect the different concept that you hear in the song that they use the music video that they promoted the album with and which just makes it for a really really cool and interesting sort of concept but cross gene is a group that people sleep on hardcore and they really shouldn't because i think that cross gene is amazingly good with a lot of the music that they release if you know me you know that i have got to include a song from taeon on this list and i'm gonna limit myself to one uh, because if i didn't then potentially i would choose others but we're gonna we're gonna pick my favorite taeon song from the year without a doubt and that is i got love and it's purely Purely, the thing that sets this song apart from all of the other songs that Taeyeon's released this year is the fact that this is the only song that she has ever released as a part of her solo career, at least that I know of, that has a slightly dark sound to it. Now, of course, you got the spectacular, you know, the killer vocals and the looks and the music video and the everything about the song and all that stuff is really, really good. The dark vibe and the dark feel to the song is something very much different from what really attracted attracted me to her solo music to begin with and you know kind of shows that she can definitely do something a little bit different or very different with her music and she has a little she, she's versatile in what she can do and the image and the and the, the persona and the whatever and the concept i guess you can say just to kind of 
wrap all that up into one thing she's pretty versatile in the concept that she can pull off and you know i got love probably is one of her best songs i think but i'm biased because i this is it, it's on my list here as uh, my favorite songs of 2017. i'm not entirely sure how many of you guys know who the group big are i'm not really entirely sure how popular these guys if they are if they're not or if they aren't popular even if they are i have no idea but I think this music video has got a little bit over a million views, so I'd say that they're somewhat well known. But one, two, three is a killer, killer chorus. Has a killer chorus. I it's it's one of those addicting choruses that you can't get out of your head once you listen to it. And the thing that sets this apart for me is the 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 mashup, I guess, of genres of this music, which I. I don't know what the genres are because it's, you know, on one hand it could be, you know, just a generic, you know, sort of EDM dance pop track, you know, that's whatever. But I kind of get a little bit of a, a, little, a little bit of a disco feel in it sometimes, get a little bit of funk out of it. You know, I guess that would be a little disco funk, whatever you want to call that. I kind of I kind of get something in it. But whatever the vibes are that you pick up in this coming out of, the, out of this song, it's definitely something. I don't think that you can listen to this song and deny that this is a song that is stands way 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 far out from the the trend of k-pop that very that a lot of other groups followed i think that big is doing something really really different with one two three and you know that is something that sets them apart from everyone else in 2017 that is a reason why i like it for 2017 that is why it made my list Shouldn't be any sort of surprise that if I was going to pick any G-Friend song to make the list for 2017, that the song that I pick would have to be Fingertip. And that is, of course, because, as, as you would know if you watch my reaction videos, that I'm ultimately ultimately disappointed with how G-Friend followed up their release of this song. Because they released this at the beginning of the year. This was their first release of the year. They followed it up with, I think, two other releases, which were more of the same of what we got for their first three or four releases up until a fingertip proceed that preceded fingertip but fingertip is a fantastic song change it up something that's a completely different sound and genre and a slightly different sort of image and at least there's a different tone and vibe to their image for this song and music video but at the same time it's still something that if you listen to it then you could understand and distinctly recognize that it is a g friend song it's got kind of you know g friend has got these qualities that they always bring to their music no matter what it is it seems and you know, they brought it to this, even though Fingertip is something that is dramatically different. I only wish that they'd kind of continued doing something like this uh, beyond this one release, but apparently it was not as successful as their company had hoped it was going to be, so they decided they're going to go with something different. Are they going to come back to this coming up in 2018? I have no idea. I'm praying and hoping to God that they do. And if they do, it's going to be a very, very exciting time. But, you know, I don't really blame them if they don't. The music is always good. You know, it just is becoming, I suppose, a little bit boring to hear the same thing from them. So hopefully in 2018 they can change it up. Even if it's not something similar to Fingertip, if it's something different from what they've released before, previously, then I'll definitely be happy with that. Next up on my list, we're talking about a song that only has just over 120,000 views on YouTube, and that is a solo song from Subin, formerly, I guess, of Dallas Shabbat, called Circle's Dream. I would also pair this one with the song uh, called Strawberry, which was also released at the same time, and you know both of these songs are really really great songs they highlight her vocal abilities really really well and of course they're completely sort of different genre than i suppose you, you would expect from a uh, k-pop idol as they release a solo song it's it feels very much more like you know I, I would hear like an indie singer kind of sing and that's always really really good um and of course you know just going beyond this being um you know something that shows off her vocal ability it's also a really really relaxing song too so you know having a little bit of re rest and relaxation as you uh, as all the previous songs that i've listed on my list have um are very intense and you know or some of them are, yeah so you get a lot of energy sometimes you just kind of take a break and take a rest and uh, relax and recover from all of the uh, the crazy k-pop that you're listening to and i think that this is a perfect example you know perfect song to do that too I was super, 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 super sad when, back when, a couple years ago, it's been now, when Glam disbanded after, you know, Dahi got in trouble, you know, it's a whole big blackmail scandal that was all around that, and so ultimately the group disbanded. 
Fortunately, I'm super happy to, to report and to say that Gion, also from that group, has made her solo debut under the name Lucy, and the song is called B Day. It's on the list, obviously, that's why we're talking about it. And it's. I. I, ha I have to. I think I'm required to put this on my list of favorite songs this year because this is one of those few songs that I listen to and every single time that I listen to it, it makes me want to dance. And if there's a song that makes me, as a person who doesn't ever want to dance, who it's not, not even a thought that crosses his mind, if this is a song that makes me want to dance, then this is obviously a song that I love and this is a song that needs to be on this list. Also, which is going to be, I think, a trend for this list, is that this is also another unique sounding song for this, for, for the year of 2017, which was filled with, you know, songs that were very much the same. It's not really that much different from any other year in K-pop, but for some reason it just feels that 2017 was just, was just loaded to the brim. With, with with stuff that was kind of, you know, generic in a sense. It was a little hard to find stuff that was a little bit unique. Even just a little teeny tiny bit unique. Kind of hard to find unique music. And so, Lucy and her song, B-Day, definitely is something unique. And that means that it's on the list. CN Blue makes the list with their song, Between Us. Uh, CN Blue always tries something different with every single release that they do, and I, for one, of course, appreciate that. I, I always appreciate groups that are always constantly evolving with every single um, release. I know that it's not the best business strategy when it comes to trying to sell and grow, you know, sell albums and grow, grow popularity, but, you know, I don't think CN Blue needs to do that anymore. They're definitely at a point where they're sustainable and they're happy. And so for this time, they tried a little bit of an electronic rock song, and you know, as is usual, CM Blue killed it. You know, they just they they put out a rocking song. It rocks. It's a great, great song. Just like every other song that they put out, you know, have have released. They're really great. They're awesome. And of course, this one as well. Not to mention the album that this song is that they use this song to promote is also really, really good. So. You know, see, we gotta we gotta put CM Blue on this list because I think that it would be, I don't know if it would be a crime if they weren't on the list, but I, I wouldn't feel right if I left CM Blue off. 2017, well, I should say not really 2017 in general, but you know, K-pop for the last year and a half, two years has been kind of lacking some like edgy and attitude in the the female performers at the very least, and female idols. You know, having some attitude and having some edge and being a little aggressive and, you know, in your face hasn't been a thing. It's just kind of fallen out of favor, you know, with K-pop when it was something that was a little bit, you know, more prevalent amongst, you know, girl groups and solo sing solo performers. But Miso from, girl gr from Girls Girls brought the attitude and the edge with her song KKPP. She also did it with, what was the name of the song? It was Pink Lady. I think that was, that was the song that she followed this one up with. Um, she did it in KKPP, which is a fantastic song. It's really, really great. I love it. It's uh, uh this this is one of those songs that like when I got it when I when I want to like you know pump up the energy, get a little amped up, get get ready to go do something like fight somebody or something like that. This is a song that I turn to, even though I've never fought anybody in my life and I never will. But if I was gonna, then we, we, this would be my fight song. We would listen to, to, to KKPP by Miso and you know we go kick somebody's ass it would feel really really wrong for me personally as a fan of four minute if i didn't include anything that was related to or something that hyuna participated in whether it was a solo release or as in this case her trio or yeah her trio what would you call what would yeah, whatever who cares it's we're, we're talking about triple h her and the two guys from pentagon who i can't remember their names in the song 365 fresh uh, it's a little bit it, the song is a little bit of a fresh take for k-pop in 2017 like i said being fresh and unique is something that is definitely a theme for this list i think and i i love it the, the vibe just the general just the entire vibe of this song is fantastic i really really love it and you know of course it has to be said too that this is something that kind of captured my attention to draw me into an album that is even better than the song than 365 fresh actually i don't know maybe if it's better at the very least it is just as good if not better we'll say that so 365 fresh by triple h uh the, the subunits debut was fantastic 
I would think that you know we've seen a little bit, we've seen a little bit more of this. But you know, since Troublemaker, Troublemaker is not going to be a thing anymore. Maybe he's going to need some stuff to do with some other cube guys, and so maybe Triple H is going to be the thing that happens in the in the future. And hopefully it does, because this song was good, the album was good. I want to see more stuff like this. 2017 was the year that we saw hard style, a, a genre of EDM music make its appearance into K-pop for the first time. That, as far as I'm aware, this is the first time that hard style has ever appeared in a K-pop song. We gotta thank Ace for bringing that with their song Cactus. They also brought it a little bit in their comeback song that followed that. And that's the thing that's, that's remarkable about this song, that's the thing that stood out to me is the hard style, you know, inclusion of that genre in the song. And just by the nature of hard style and the, the way that, you know, the, the, the things that make hard style, you know, hard style, they make EDM music hard style, this makes this song an absolute banger. This song goes off from like the very beginning. At the very least, it kicks off, it goes, it, it, it just absolutely hits hard during the moment where the, during the, like, I think it's a dance breakdown in the song, or the, the music video at, at the very least, where the, the hard style genre, like, makes its appearance most prominent. Um, so, that's really good. Definitely looking forward to seeing, you know, what kind of fun and interesting things Ace does with, you know, either hard style or bringing other unique interest and interesting genres to K-pop. Uh, I hope that they continue, you know, being, you know, just experimenting and doing new things. Very, very interested to hear what they do in 2018. In 2017, it was a year that saw a couple of releases from boy groups from SM Entertainment that were rather divisive amongst fans, where a lot of people liked them, a lot of people absolutely hated them and thought they were hot garbage. And I personally really, really liked Cherry Bomb by NCT 127. I think it's a really great song. I think it's definitely unique. You know, like I said, the theme of this list, unique songs of 2017 that are not Tropical House or just in general, House something or other in general, Cherry Bomb NC from NCT 127 is definitely something that is different. And if you add this to the list of uh, to the couple of other songs that they've released over the course of their career, it's another song that kind of shows me or makes me think even more that NCT 127 is potentially the the most like legit and most real and most authentic you know hip hop hip hop k-pop group in in all of k-pop and you know they're not they're not afraid to kind of go at and cha chase after genres of, of hip hop or include influences from other genres of hip hop like heavily into their music and you know where other groups might be like do we want to go hit we want to do something that's hip hop we're only going to do it like half because that's not really a genre that the that the k-pop audience in general you know jives with too much but nct 127 doesn't care they will include you know trap or whatever kind of stuff that they want to do cherry bomb is an example of exactly that that fearlessness when it comes to selecting the the sound that they're going to go go with when it comes to uh their their comebacks about a million years after her debut, Boa is still just cranking out the hits. Uh, maybe not hits in the context of K-pop, you know, the, today. She's not like, you know, popularity-wise at the top of the, of the heap. She's not winning award shows and music shows and stuff like that. But then again, I don't think she's really actually competing for them either. But her song that she released this year called Camo is another just as usual with everything that she's released something that is also is really 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 good this song kind of it kind of reminds me a little bit of some of her older stuff that she's released because i've been listening to some of it through the throwback reaction videos and this song feels like older boa but at the same time it feels like something that was of course produced for 2017 so it's like it's a song written in 2017 it's kind of kind of got a little bit of a callback to some of her earlier moments in her career which is really really nice what's also really nice is the fact that boa just absolutely murders everything that she tries to do she kills it she slays in this song she slays in every song but this one in particular well this is the one that, that was released in 2017 so that's why it's on the list 
Once again, sometimes we've got to take a break from the intense intensity and the, the crazy energy and just the the, the 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 crazy visuals and the performance and all that stuff of K-pop and just kind of like dial it back to a more basic and more relaxed kind of song. And that's why we're talking about this song from Beck Aeon that was Beck Aeon that was released this year called Sweet Lies. You know, sometimes sometimes a break from the pop music is good and it's needed and it's awesome. And this is a really good song to to kind of do that. She can sing, obviously. That's what you know a, a big portion of or a big reason why she's really really awesome. But of course, too, another thing is just similar to like I talked about with with Subin back uh, in the uh, probably 20 minutes ago. It seems now at this point, um, this song got a little bit of a sing indie singer vibe. I don't know exactly if you would kind of com- if you would consider this girl to be a k-pop singer or not it would be kind of an interesting debate i suppose to have because i don't know exactly how popular she is i don't know how she is like kind of considered next to k-pop idols but you know maybe maybe she's not necessarily a k-pop singer maybe she's more you know non you know maybe she's less mainstream than you know you would need to be to be considered k-pop to be a k-pop singer but she is pretty well known she's definitely well known so you know maybe then she is considered k-pop i don't know that's an interesting discussion that can be had, but it doesn't matter whatever she is, wh- you know, whatever she stands on the K-pop and the you know music industry here. The the fact is that her music is great. It's really really nice to listen to, and um, you know we just want to listen to it to relax, take a break, you know, rest from all of the songs that we listen to between listening to Circles Dream by Subin and this song from Beck Young. So. Our break from the crazy K-pop music is going to be two songs. We're going to take a little six minute long break here as we also share the the song Don't You Know by Hayes. 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 That's her name. Uh, It's not really in Korean, but I'm not going to say it because it's not. I don't don't speak Korean. This is English. We're speaking English here, not Korean. Um, But similarly, the reason why I like the song from Baekhyun is it's a little it's something that feels outside of the K-pop sphere. But at the same time, like, she's popular enough to be included in the K-pop sphere. You know, just the genre of music that she's doing as much as something more R&B than anything else. So, I really, really dig it. She's really awesome. She was really awesome at KCON in LA, too. So, that's also potentially a little bit of a reason why she's on this list. Now that our break from all the crazy K-pop music is finished, let's get back into the crazy K-pop music with the song from 9B's is called Remember. And... This song is definitely, I would say, at least for me personally, I don't know about you, but I would say that this is one of the best Nine Muses songs that they've ever released. But that's like, every song that Nine Muses released has released has been something really, really good. So, I don't know exactly how you would rate that, but this is something that is definitely very much different from a lot of stuff that Nine Muses has released, and the chorus just sounds absolutely epic. Not to mention, too, Remember the theme of this entire list here, which is stuff that is not generic tropical house or house in K-pop that was released in 2017. This is not one of those songs. This is something that is different and unique, and that's always a good thing. Another song similar to Nine Muses and their song Remember is a song from Stellar Stellar called Archangels of the Sephiroth, which is once again something somewhat of a complete change for them, similar to like the Nine Muses song was that I just talked about. And they they go for something. The music has always been good. The music has always, always, always been good. But they gone they went for something this time that where the music video didn't necessarily, you know, kind of play on their sex appeal as much as they have in the past to kind of sell it. And they just kind of relied on their good and also very, very interesting sort of idea for the for the for the music. And you know, their unique concept wins out. You know, I don't have to, I didn't have to say anything when I when I you know did my reaction video for this song to say like Stellar, you're 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 using the sex appeal as distracting people from your amazing music and apparently somebody over there listens to me because they they definitely just put the music out on display and the music is good. Y'all should go listen to this song if you didn't. It's definitely the, the theme of remember the theme of this video of this of this list, unique songs in 2017 this song is definitely something that is unique we are now on to the final page of my notebook of song of 
of songs for this video so we're in the home stretch we're almost there guys we made it all the way to this far so please don't click away continue watching because we're going to talk about potentially the most unique song that was released in 2017 and also similar it's just like nct 127 with their song cherry bomb another super super divisive song amongst fans of xo because Coco Bop was a song that either you loved it or you absolutely hated it. I personally absolutely loved it. I really liked what they did with the song. It was definitely something that was unique. I think it was a little brave to go for something that was so eccentric like they did. And I mean, I'm just, it, it's a really interesting sort of thing. You know, use some reggae in the verses and then completely turn that on its head during the choruses to bring it something completely different. I'm all about that. Remember the theme of this of this video? I think I've said it like three times in a row now because we talked about three super, super unique songs and this is another super, super unique song. I'm not entirely sure if I would consider this song from Lee Jin Ah, who I fell in love with listening to as I, as I saw her compete on K-Pop Star 6. I'm not entirely sure if I would consider this to be a break from all the crazy K-Pop, but we're going to call it a break from the crazy K-Pop. But this video, this song is pretty up-tempo and energetic, so maybe it's not so much of a break. But this song kind of just, it, it, it encapsulates, it showcases all of the reasons that I fell in love with this girl. I was waiting for her solo debut, you know, for her to release her first official, you know, music after I saw her on K-Pop Star. And this just kind of shows all of the reasons in a full length, you know, produced song that's not a, you know, performance on stage. It's a really fantastic song. It's a really fantastic, it's a really, really fun song to listen to. Um, if I'm remembering correctly back to my music video reaction, which isn't any different from when I watched, when I listened to this song in general. I had a big goofy smile on my face as I was listening to this song. It was a, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. If you like having fun, which I don't know who doesn't like having fun, then you should definitely listen to this song and have some fun. Maybe it is a little bit of a break from all the crazy K-pop, because sometimes all the crazy K-pop is not a lot of fun. Maybe it's, it's really, yeah, yeah, we're having some fun with, with Lee Jin Ah, and, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a break from the crazy K-pop. Getting back into the crazy K-pop after we uh, listen to Lee Jin Ah, we got it. We just got to include 101 in their in their in their debut song, Energetic, because it sounds like Shiny. It sounds. It reminds me of Shiny coming from going all the way back to to View to off their Odd album. I think that's the name of the song, the album. You, this, this reminds me of Shiny of the last couple of years. You know, something that's like synth pop. You know, it's all that. They got they got the qualities of, of shiny. Obviously, that's really really good. You know, if, if you if if you're reminding people of like a of a legendary K-pop group, someone who's who's definitely well known and popular and at that at the top of the game when it comes to like the reputation and all that in K-pop, that's always always a good thing. I also do kind of appreciate the fact that you know while their sound is a little bit generic, it's kind of you know the whole house thing you know it's not something crazy unique but they didn't throw them in the tropical thing that's definitely a plus i can't can't say that that's you know uh that that's a bad thing that they that even though they weren't they didn't that, that they went with house it wasn't something that was you know it was still generic ish but it wasn't like all the way generic with a tropical house i gotta i gotta give them some, some props for that so I don't know if they'd really kind of if this song would really kind of consider be be a part of my list of uh, you know unique songs from 2017. You know the theme of this video, but maybe 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 I don't know. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. If I didn't limit myself to one single Luna song, I probably would have this this list would probably have considered had consisted of like five or all of them or something like that i have no idea how many it would have would have consisted of but there'd have been a lot there'd have been a lot of luna you know other member or you know one third odd eye circle or whoever in this list that's not really fair to everyone else and then it would have made the list longer and it would have made this video longer and everyone would have stopped watching by now but I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the one, and the one is gonna be "Love Cherry Motion" from Cherry. From Cherry, it's a great song. It's really awesome. I definitely dig the you know the the blend of the the super fun and upbeat parts that she has, and then when she's not participating in the in the music video, a little bit of the sexy little interludes and transitions in the song. It's a really sort of like nice little contrast right there. And also, it's a fun song to listen to, so that's good. It's also a little bit unique. 
And it wouldn't be a favorites list from me if it didn't have a song from Hyuna on it. Unfor well, not unfortunately. Fortunately, the song that she, the song that made this list, is her song. Is in English it's Babe, but I'm pretty sure in the Korean it's Babe, Baby, Babe. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's confusing. I don't understand it, but you know, it is what it is. Thing that I like about this song, it's 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 a showing a different side of Hina than she's done in the last couple of years, and that's always good. And this song too is also something that I would kind of you know to draw a parallel with as to the the message and the meaning and you know what the what, what the what the purpose of the song is supposed to be. Kind of we gotta draw comparisons I think to the to the song from IU. Uh, it's called 23 off of this. the Chatshire album that she released was it two two th two years ago I believe it is. Um, very much similar to that to kind of like say like hey look this is all my past image but this is who I really am you know this is this is this is me something like that is something similar to that I like that it's different unfortunately she kind of went back a little bit to you know what she'd been doing in the last couple of years with with lip and hip but you know lip and hips a good song too I enjoy it you know Hyuna is always really something that's really really good and a little interesting as well so you know, this is no, this is this is no, no exception. It's a really, really good song. The second to last female solo song to make this list comes from Sun Sunmi and her song Kashina, and I, I, it's it's another amazing solo song from her. She's always released stuff that I can remember that's definitely got a unique concept and sound and all of that too. Is definitely, you know, not really following. What you would, I suppose, expect to, to hear from a K-pop idol or see from a K-pop idol, you know? Just like you don't necessarily expect a music video to be super gory and violent and bloody, but sometimes it happens, and that's always a good thing. This is one of those songs that is... It's, 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 it's so shocking, it's so different, it's not what you expect, and it's good because of that. It's, I, I think that's, that makes, makes it really, really great. You know, and, and just in general, going a little bit more basic than that, I guess you could say, I just love the vibe and the sound of, of the chorus. It's it's great. I love it. I, I, I get down to the chorus every single time. It's really, really good. Another song that had a fantastic chorus is a song from SF9 called O Sole Mio, which the chorus is great, but what's even better than the chorus is the fact that they are one of two groups, because there was another group, I can't remember exactly what the, which one it was, unfortunately um that inc incorporated some you know latin american you know vibes and influences to the music to a, like a large degree in this song reminded me in my, in my in my reaction video um i think i brought up i said like ricky martin or something like that but it, you know it reminds me of, like the hispanic pop music that was popular back in like the 90s early 2000s in the united states and i, I mean i got like some serious vibes like that off of this song and that's definitely cool Something a little bit unique in the year 2017, which is full of super generic music, which unique is always good. It is, unique is always good no matter what what year it is, to be completely honest, but SF9 doing something a little bit different with their music, something that, that I really, really appreciate, and they did really, really well with it. We're at the second to last song, guys. Second to last, and we're, last, and we're talking about the brand new group from TS Entertainment called TRCNG, or Tracing, or whatever you want to call them their debut song, Spectrum. While it might not be unique if this was released in like 2013 or 2012, it is unique for 2017, I think. It, it's, it's definitely a little bit of an interesting sort of um, dynamic there. I listen to this song and it reminds me of, you know, like, I, just to kind of name a big boy group, it reminds me of like XO songs or stuff like that, for, or, or, you know, other similar groups like that from like two three or so years ago not too crazy in the past but you know far enough in the past that k-pop has evolved a lot since then this reminds me of a little bit of like an older sort of just a slightly older you know boy group sort of song and you know while that sound in and of itself isn't something that is groundbreaking or amazing you know considering the context of, of k-pop for the year it is actually something that i think is noteworthy and remarkable and it, and it is why i like it a lot we're going to finish off my list here with a song from John Soyeon, her solo debut titled Jelly. Now, at first listen, this song might sound super messy and disjointed and not very well put together. And I don't think that I would really blame you for thinking that, but I personally think that it is actually a really, really well put together song. It works somehow. 
I don't know how they do it. I don't know what kind of black magic the composers used to put all the, to, to, to just like glue everything together, but they did it and it works and it sounds great. It feels weird to, it, it feels weird to listen to, but that's also a reason why I love it. It's just, there's so much, there's so many weird things and weird aspects to the song that you don't really expect in K-pop because K-pop's all about having some smooth and refined music, dude. It's just like it's it's smooth, it's refined. It's there's nothing that's really really weird about it, you know. But then but then she, really, she Soyeon's released this song, and it's not smooth and it's weird, and I, the, that's just the quality that I like about it, you know. I think that this, you know, similar just like EXO with their song Coco Bop, this is also potentially right up there with some of the most unique songs of the year for me. So. That is it. My throat is dry. I am like need to finish this, and I'm sorry that this is so long. But I'm not gonna make this 30 songs long in the next video. Um, at the very least, I'm gonna break it up into two separate videos. Um, but I gotta get this done. So sorry this isn't out and finished at the end of the year on, on the final day of the year like I had initially planned. But you know, stuff happens. Things things come up. Things get in the way. The video was poor quality. It would have been poor quality if I'd done it now, then, and um, that's 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 really that. So, question of the day, question of the video is: I want you guys to share your favorite song or songs or whatever from 2017 down in the comments below. Of course, I already did. I took the time to put it together for you guys so that you can see what I've got to, to what I was enjoying, and uh, I hope to hear. And I'm definitely interested to hear what you guys have got to say about what your favorite songs are. So. Looking forward to what's going to come out in twenty in twenty eighteen. It's going to be full of amazing music, just like every single year in K-pop is. What those what those songs are going to be, or what groups are going to are going to be responsible for those songs, I have no idea. Nobody can know. But I will be back once again, as always, to recap my favorite songs of twenty eighteen in about twelve months' time. So that's going to be it for this video. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'm gonna see you all next time.